Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. Here's a sneak peek. And this one is part of the color scheme challenge. Have you taken the challenge? Today we're using bright yellow and quinacridone magenta. So here is the inspiration for this page. This is a picture I took uh, when I visited Bouchard Gardens. These are actual flowers and you can see that bright yellow and the magenta and all the different colors that show up in nature. So I printed this off on copy paper with my laser printer and I'm just ripping out parts of this and collaging it down for the first layer. Now collaging it down is going to give me texture. It also, because the colors are there, it gives me that jumping off point. You could use your own pictures for inspiration and then play off those colors as you're going to see me doing. You can use pictures from a magazine. It could be clothing pictures. It's simply going to be that first layer and it's going to point you in the direction of your color story. So if you find a pay picture that you like, put it down. It doesn't have to be even necessarily the whole picture. So I'm collaging this down with liquid matte medium. I use the Liquitex brand. This is the basics version, but you can also get the professional. Links to it and other products that I may use in this video can be found in the description box below. There are coupon codes for stencils bought at Nini's Napkins, as well as TCW, Shopify Store, and Amazon. So once I have a base layer, I grab the Dash V stencil, the six inch size, and I'm using modeling paste. This one's Crafters Workshop modeling paste through the stencil. And I apologize, the I, turned on the camera but not the record button. So here's all I did is I put the modeling paste, I applied with a palette knife through the stencil. And at this point, I really don't know where I'm going with this or what kind of focal image. So I just want some interesting pattern. I'm grabbing my white gesso here and I'm just putting gesso on the edges. I'm going to be applying more color and I just want to prepare the page because where the gesso is, it's going to be, it's going to take paint a little bit differently than just the magazine or the photo picture that again was just copy paper. It is a bit of a heavier weight copy paper that I got at Costco. But you can use what you have magazine pictures or whatever. This just kind of blurs the edges and makes things blend together. So you don't end up with those hard edges. Now you could also, if I wanted to put gesso over all of it, I could put clear gesso over the magazines as well as every, or the picture as well. And that would prepare it to take paint in another way. And it wouldn't cover up the picture. So that's always an option that you have. This is a great way to choose your colors, something that catches your eye, take a picture of it, print it off, and use that to guide your color choices. Now, I have these texture plates that I've got from Caravelle Studios, and I haven't used them. It's been months and months, so I decide, you know, today's the day. So I'm applying black acrylic paint with a makeup sponge onto this plate and I'm just pressing it on there. I want some interest in the background. I'm not getting an exact um, stamp primarily because I've got so much texture already on that page that, page that I don't have a flat surface but this texture does show through 
and I'm loving this texture plate. Now the colors are have been chosen for me by the colors that are in the picture that I took, the bright yellow and the quidacridone magenta. Now this is my color scheme book and I show how to set this up. And basically in the color scheme book, you're taking your colors and you're swatching them out and you're mixing them to see what other colors you get if you mix them. Now remember, you can add black and you can add white and you can add varying amounts of either of those or varying amounts of the yellow and the quinacridone magenta. So I'm just showing here how when you add white, you're getting different tones, different shades, and all of those things are things that you can use in a color scheme challenge on purpose. So not only do I have the yellow and the quinacridone magenta, I have all these different shades, which and when you look at the picture of the flowers that I initially start with, all of those are represented in that picture. I absolutely love that flower. I think it's Lantana, and I grew it in my garden last year because I fell in love with it. So there are the paints that I have, and I'm using white gesso as well, and I'm mixing it with my fingers right on the page. And this is going to give a very different effect than if I just blended it all. And I'm jumping around the page, you'll notice. And what that does, it gives more variation. I want this page to resemble that flower those flowers with a little brighter yellow, some of the coral that you get, some of the oranges that you get, some of the straight up quinacridone magenta. So I'm jumping around and that's just helping me build that variation in. I'm working the paints into the modeling paste and of course where they're going on the modeling paste they, they take a little differently than if they were just on the raw page that is will be different than where there is a, a coat of gesso. If you're mixing colors and you get a tone that isn't quite what you want for where you have it, grab a baby wipe and wipe it back. You have some time to play with it. I'm turning the page and you can see I'm jumping all around. And there I got rid of it. The color wasn't quite the tone I wanted. I wanted a little bit brighter and that one was a little bit dull. You see teal on my palette. I was going to use teal on this and then chose not to because I was loving. At this point, I'm loving what I'm getting here. The texture, the, the pattern. Um, you can still see the little bit of flowers like in, the re in real life. It's a little hard to tell in the video. And you could have stopped at any time, left white space, but I was absolutely loving this. And I knew because I had done the color swatching in my little book that really there was no color that I was going to mix together, the, the quinacridone magenta and the yellow, there was no combination of that that really was going to give me mud. It was not going to give me a bad color. So this is a great one for mixing. Now I grabbed this stencil. This is called Jungle Vines and it's a crafter's workshop one and oh I just love the movement that the designer created in this and I'm using gesso through the stencil with a makeup sponge. Now the thing about gesso is you need when you use gesso through a stencil I recommend that you wash that stencil right away it does tend to build up and it latches on a little bit stronger um, than acrylic paint I mean as you can see the stencil had a lot of acrylic paint but with that gesso it's just that little bit of it's grittier and somehow it, it adheres differently I'm just getting this on here and oh my gosh I love this so much so then I went in search, uh, you know, went through my stash and went through the files and grabbed this yellow butterfly again. It's that bright yellow. It has a little bit of the kind of orange that I have created mixing my paints. And then I grabbed a sentiment and I'm fussy cutting roughly around that sentiment. 
getting rid of some of the white. And I tend to do that when I have a script. Now this sentiment comes from my sentiment pack number one. And you can email me if you're interested in purchasing any of my sentiment packs. Just doing a little bit more close cutting, adding a little bit of shaping to this butterfly. Often when I have them in the stash, they aren't cut exactly perfectly. And I apologize for my phone cord um, hanging in, in the view. I do fix that in a, in a minute. So I'm figuring out, taking a picture of the composition, seeing if I like it, and quite happy with it. But I decide I want to add some gold splatters. Now, the gold is like the bright yellow. And so I'm not considering it an additional color. So I'm splattering. Now I have this gold thinned out in these little containers because I tend to do a lot of splattering. And if you find yourself doing a lot of splattering, it may be worthwhile. If you splatter very rarely, that's not something you necessarily want to do. I use a fan brush to splatter. It's, it's very loose. I find I get the best splatters with that. If you're storing the paint for splatters in a container, you may have to add a spritz of water every once in a while just to thin it down, as it does tend to thicken over time. Now, I chose to splatter before I put the butterfly on because I didn't want the butterfly or the sentiment to have splatters on it. Again, not a matter of right or wrong, just a choice. Grabbing the matte medium again and adhering the sentiment down. Now the black of the sentiment goes with the stamping that I did that you can still see a very little of that and there's a little bit of black on, to, on the butterfly. Now that butterfly doesn't really stand out yet, but I'm going to do some shading and I'm using the floating acrylic technique. If you've watched me at all, you know I use this technique a lot to shade with and I'm using the quinacridone magenta and just adding a little bit of definition in there. And I'm liking the look, but I'm deciding that it's not quite enough. So I am going to come in and I'm going to shade with black, which then ties into the bold black of the script. But if you don't like that addition of black, you could just leave it with this softer color. And it just gives a different feel to the page. It's lighter, brighter. <clears throat> Often I do both, the color and then black. I like that dual effect. It just adds a little bit more interest. So there I'm adding the black and I go here I'm going on top of the butterfly and then I go on the outside of it. Now I found in certain spots here that it wasn't the acrylic paint wasn't adhering and I think I just didn't get gel medium over the top of it. So make sure you cover it and make the whole um, focal image a non-porous surface, and then it'll all take. So I could have put clear gesso on top of that, or just make sure that I had an even coat of um, fluid medium. I'm just darkening up the middle a little bit, just tweaking it to what I like. So you can use whatever printable, this was a magazine butterfly um, you have, and then you can alter it to better fit your page. I'm just shading around the outside 
just tying everything in. I've got the black on the butterfly. I got the black in the stamping be in behind and and in the sentiment. And so I'm just tying all the elements together. Please, if you are not a follower on Instagram of mine, please go over to Instagram and follow me at Creative Katie. Some things uh, never make it to video. Sometimes I post on there well ahead of the video so you kind of get a sneak peek and you know what's coming and can watch out for it. And thank you so much for being a subscriber. Again, links to the stencils can be found in the links below. You can get the stencils sometimes through Amazon, through TCW Shopify link, as well as through Ninny's Napkins. They each have their own selection, so shop and find the best deals. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the close-ups. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.